Herzlich willkommen auf dem lösungsorientierten Vernetzungsportal Living Earth. Hier auf der Living Earth beleuchten wir jeden Monat ein bestimmtes Thema von den unterschiedlichsten Seiten. Um dann das neu gewonnene Wissen, die praktischen Erfahrungen und Anwendungen in unserem Alltag und in unsere Projekte zu integrieren. So erschaffen wir gemeinsam, Schritt für Schritt, die neue lebendige Erde. Hello, my name is Tatjana Strobe and welcome to the Living Earth. And today I have an amazing, amazing guest. It's, a, it's in the meantime a really, really good friend of mine. And uh, I'm so happy that you are here, Neosho Mooning. It's so nice to have you here. Thank you, Tatiana. Uh, I'm, so, I'm so happy to be here. And thank you for uh, this interview. And uh, yes. Yes, let's start. You know, you are an amazing teacher of Qigong, of meditation, and so much other stuff and you you start very early you start with 15 years with qigong so can yes. you explain us a little bit uh, your way why you start that early for us it's yeah mm. the most people came there with 30 or 40 or 50 or never <laughs> but mm. you started very early so take us to on your journey okay so i'm right now 50 years old so it's been 35 years uh, since I started Qigong practice meditation. And uh, I have to go back to uh, eight years more that when I was age of seven, I moved to Paris in France. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I met friends. I went to the French uh, school like uh, elementary school and I met friend and I had very good time and then my parents decided to move me to uh, to attend the Japanese school so I went there and then I had a big confusion mm. when I was speaking with a French friend we always talk what we are thinking right now. And that's the most important thing. And that builds the trust to each other. Mm -hmm. And, it, but in Japanese school, it's completely opposite. Oh my God. We rarely say what we are thinking right now. Mm -hmm. It's kind of rude to say that. It's it's kind of selfish for them. Oh wow! So I I looked like a completely Asian Japanese, and uh, when I went to school the first day, I I talk whatever I felt, and they were like so unhappy. And then eventually they start bullying me, mm -hmm. and they call me like selfish guy like uh yeah and they treat me bad and then <clears throat> still i have the french friend and i made uh, one or two japanese friends and all of a sudden i think that was uh, when i was eight i realized what happened if all my friends get together and meet and go to the park and play. What should I say? I have no answer. If you, if you, I don't say anything, my friend's friend gets scared of me. If I say everything, my Japanese friends get angry at me, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and it happens to me The confusion was so deep. Hmm. I I realized I have to find something that I can rely on. Hmm. And it must be 
something we all have. So from that moment, I started searching for some kind of energy or some kind of model or concept that we all have. So we all have human body. So maybe it's about the body, but I, I didn't know yet. Mm -hmm. So I start reading a book and uh, I read all the, uh, all the books in the library in Japanese elementary school. And then I started reading different kinds of books. And then at the age of 10, I read a book about Lao Tzu or Lao Tzu, you mm -hmm. pronounce? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I found it fascinating because he, he talks about the energy and the way, the Tao. It's, it's there and sometimes we realize it, sometimes it don't. Mm -hmm. And it's, it covers the whole world. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, maybe this is it. I want to learn about it more. Mm -hmm. So I read more books and I was <laughs> in the UK at that time. So I couldn't reach uh, to a library or reading about Qigong. So I wait until I reach to the uh, high school. So uh, when I get back to Japan and enter the high school, I start searching, how do I learn Qigong? Mm -hmm. And I found uh, one group that they don't actually teach in Qigong, but they are teaching martial arts. It's a, it's a very small school. And uh, I like the guy very much. The teacher was fantastic. And I started learning martial arts and Qigong from them. Can you explain a little bit uh, what is martial art, that you have a picture of it? Uh, I wish I have a picture, but it's, it's a kind of very minor martial arts. And uh, it's, it's not like a, a Wing Chun or Tai Chi or it's, it's not known. It's called Ikum. And uh, it's, it's very old martial arts. And it used lots of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so there, there are, they have lots of uh, training of Qi or mm -hmm. Qigong. Mm -hmm. So that's why I chosen that type, certain type of martial arts. Okay. And then how you went into Qigong and explain us what is Qigong because most people have no idea what it, what it really is. Yes. I, uh, when I first learned in Qigong, I was always thinking about the superpower because Qigong is like a, like a Dragon Ball word, like Kamehameha and stuff like that. So, so I was so excited to, to do it. And uh, I was I was trying to like, you know, bend the spoon or I, I liked all, all kind of that stuff. And then uh, when I started learning the martial arts, I found it more subtle. Like it affects my feeling and my body instantly. Mm -hmm. So it, it's like a consciousness has a direction. Like uh, when we choose something, the energy just concentrate and accelerate something. Mm -hmm. So the Chinese martial arts using this method to accelerate your power and from understanding the energy, it can like manipulate the flow of energy towards the direction we intend to do. Can you make an example? Focus on what and what's what's happening then? Mm. Okay. Uh, there is a mm, like a famous training that it, it's kind of plain 
but uh, we push each other with one hand. Mm -hmm. And I think you've done that before. Yes, okay. Yeah. And it, it shows, it's a very good example of using your intention. Mm -hmm. So when we start that, you just pushing with your hands or your intention is always at your arm and using the muscle to be strong. But with Qigong, if you're intention goes down toward the earth and reach to the core of the earth the very center of the earth and feel the connection it's like imagining beam of light goes down to your body and reach to the core of the earth and then the way of use the power is different very different. You feel more stable. You feel more strength. You you feel you don't have to use muscle. Mm -hmm. And that's the this is the one beautiful experience of uh, using qigong. I made it. I made it three times, and it's absolutely fascinating because the. Uh, at the beginning, okay, you don't have an idea. You know, two people are standing like this. And one people puts pressure on the other person, you know. And then uh, normally in a short amount of time, you collapse, you know, or you go one, one step behind because uh, there's too much pressure. And then the next second you explain, you know, to calm down and to, um, to how do you say, uh, to focus on the earth, you know, to understand that you are one. And then we did the same and uh, it was so stable and it took a lot of power and pressure from you to, you know, to remove me. And this is, this is totally fascinating, you know, and just with a simple change. It's not, it's not a scientific stuff, you know, it's not difficult. It's not something special. It's very easy. And just with that, you change it, and this is amazing. Mm -hmm. So, in a way, the qigong is is not only the managing the life force or energy inside of you, mm -hmm. but it's more about connecting the dots mm -hmm. around yourself, the consciousness and intention and physical world and your body, your body cell and the universe and earth. And there are like a tiny factors that around you. And once you integrate everything, mm -hmm. you will have more energy to, to do it. Mm -hmm. So you are doing it now since 35 years. Isn't that boring to do it every day? <laughs> <laughs> well, the beautiful thing about Qigong is, is uh, at first, I practiced a lot, a lot, like four hours, six hours. Uh, I once I tried to like stand, do the standing meditation, and uh, okay, maybe sometimes I should go like all day long standing meditation, and I just tried that, and. Uh, so I stand like six hours and I felt so good. I mm -hmm. felt so energized and I feel so light and mm -hmm. my my brain is like like mm -hmm. my, my brain is like connecting to the horizon mm -hmm. of this planet. So it it gave me the feeling that oh this state of consciousness brings the sensitivity of qigong mm -hmm. so every time i practice i i try to after that experience every time i practice i get into that world tap into that qigong world and be 
in that conscious consciousness so and then something different happened so qigong is is something it looks very boring there's no nothing much to like move bodies there there are so many kind of like postures and moving bodies but it basically it's about going out of space and time mm-hmm. like combining space and time to, to going out of space and time so it's it's really a bridge from the vibrational world to the physical world so qigong is is the bridge to connect different worlds into this world so as you can see there are some people just just do kamehameha in real life and i saw once or twice and it was amazing and there there are guys who can who can make your like shoulders and bodies very hard so like you can you can hit him with a like a metal pipe and metal pipe just bend so that kind of uh thing happens when you can really concentrate in that word tap into that word and stay there and just get the physical amazing physical results and also in it can be used in uh, as you know there's a medical qigong that who can who can change like the status of organ expanding like 20 minutes so this kind of thing you can you can go into so many directions and i never get bored since i was 15. that's great you know you you made some exercises with us and it it was very interesting to to watch the mind because the mind is a very quick board because uh, you you make this movement you know at yes. the beginning yes. where you just shake your hands mm-hmm. and then you know my mind was telling me oh, when it stops how long <laughs> it goes you know it was like this and if you the moment you overcome this and you said stop it <laughs> you say stop it to your mind because mm-hmm. it's only your mind mm-hmm. then i've i felt that the miracle happened because mm-hmm. then you know you get light and you you lost the weight of your body and you understand mm-hmm. that you are one you know with heaven with yes. the earth with soil it's it was magical and also this uh the second exercise we we made so mm-hmm. we we hold the chi yeah like mm-hmm. this you know and then uh, yep. we hold mm-hmm. it i have no idea how for for how long but it felt like hours you know <laughs> and it was also the body says oh what's this it's hurting i can't do this anymore can we stop it please and also the moment i accepted and i said come on stop this you know stop this uh, crying here um this moment i i lost the feeling of it hurts mm. and mm. it it's hard or heavy or something like this in this moment i think my consciousness expanded you know it mm. was not just a, an, a physical exercise with mm. uh, uh, holding something it was so much more and mm. this is yeah, this was really fascinating for me to understand there is so much more and also to understand how how my mind is branded. You know, my mind always mm. wants to have something new and action right. and, you know, and it's good now. Let's move to the next. It's something <laughs> like this. And Qigong is like coming down, accept what it is, what it is mm-hmm. and and just be in the moment this is mm. what i felt i have no idea if is this the idea behind or I don't know so um tell us a little bit more for for what they they use it you know it's it's mm. you told me it's more than 1000 years old it came it's not a method i think it's a lifestyle or it's it's yes. not 
you do it like a sports method. Mm -hmm. It's it's so mm -hmm. much more. Explain us a yes. little bit about the background. Mm. So uh, actually, the name Qigong is it's quite new name. It's uh, it's about maybe less than one hundred years, mm -hmm. like maybe seventy years old. And uh, before, it's called in different ways. And the China has uh, like a culture of holding this big concept of qi. Mm -hmm. And there are medical qigong, qigong for martial arts, and qigong for longevity. And there's so many different things. And it's, it's called uh, doinjutsu. It's in Japanese, but uh, doinjutsu. It's a, one of the ancient, most ancient qigong style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it go back to like 2000 years, mm -hmm. something like that. And there, there's a, a like a, a picture of men moving hands like this and this and this. So it, it shows how they use their body to get their uh, energy back to the body. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, the name itself is like withdrawing method mm. so i i believe ancient chinese uh knew that there are some way to connect to the source of the energy mm -hmm. and we can tap into that world so that we can get the healing and longevity and mm -hmm. these uh, kind of things mm -hmm. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit more about qi? What's the yes. meaning of qi? Mm. Qi, uh, normally we call qi as a life force. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the very center of the concept of qi. But qi is also exist in the air. And our consciousness it's quite fascinating that our consciousness is believe ourselves as a like human body. This this body is my life. Mm -hmm. That's what consciousness believe all the time. But when you tap into the chi world, your consciousness expands. Mm -hmm. And then you feel your body is held by something else. Mm. As you felt that in the training, the practice, uh, you feel the lightness and you feel that like some kind of texture around you. Like it's, it's kind of jelly like wavy form exists mm. in the air. But in science, we know that we are like collective of molecules. Mm -hmm. And science already know that in the air there are molecules. Mm -hmm. So in a way, Qi is showing the concept of how this real world exist in the mm -hmm. molecular level because when you use your hands to move this way it's not only your hands moving that way but the molecules of the air made the space for you mm -hmm. to move this way wow. so it's like it's like always the collaborating phenomenon happening and once we experience that, mm -hmm. we can we can live in that perspective. Mm -hmm. So it's a so, big expansion, huh? Then we understand there is so much more, and we are yes. aware of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we always say, "She tells you everything." Wow. She tells you everything. That's amazing. Yes. Because there's always a flow of chi 
and the flow shows where you are and where you go, which way to, which one to choose, which way to go. There's always a subtle flow around you and inside you, and it's it's connecting. So this is life changing experience for me to learn the chi every day and i feel so it was like when i was about 20 years ago uh, 20 years old when i uh open the door and go to work hmm which foot should i step first and then i ask chi so i feel the flow of my uh, legs and the feel the flow around my body and it actually tells which leg to move first how big the footstep and it's all there all the information is there mm -hmm. wow can you show us a, a short exercise so we can practice it we can a little get a little uh, impression of it yes uh so before we get into the exercise uh there's a uh important <clears throat> concept uh mm -hmm. in learning chi um using the energy of consciousness it's like uh rolling moving a big big wheel like if you have like an ancient wooden big wheel Wow. And then you have, when you have to move it, you have to push it first. But when it's pushed, then it rolls. And then you don't have to worry too much, just taking care of it bit by bit. So the first moment when you decide and go to that direction, you use the energy of consciousness, which we mm -hmm. call intention. Mm -hmm. But afterward, we always pull out that tension and make it expand and feel it's there so that we can just, using no intentions, just be there and the things are moving. So, so that's the beauty of life. Hmm. I suppose. Wow. And so training of chi always starts from intention, like using the consciousness. Where am I and which way we are going to go? And then once we push ourselves into that direction, and then just release all the intention. Just feel the relaxation. Just feel the expansion. Just feel this subtleness inside your body, the energy around your body. Hmm. So, now we do one exercise. Yeah. To feel the chi. And it's, it's already there, always. And mm -hmm. Since we are so busy, we don't want to like feel the chi. We don't have time to feel the chi. So let's get back to our nature state of our body, feeling the chi all the time. And we can we can know like that, like one quick we can know that we are having the chi. So. I have my face here and in the face we have somewhere that very sensitive to chi and I think uh, when you're a child you play with it if you put your finger towards your nose like upper part of your nose you feel something like mm, or like weird sensation 
if you get it to close enough in between your eyes, you feel something, something. You don't touch the skin, no? It's just... Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. Don't mm -hmm. touch the skin, but you feel, you feel the sensation. Yeah. Yes. And change your hands again and feel the sensation. Yes, you can feel it uh, with your like a uh, forehead and uh, your nose. Yeah, this is it. Yes, yes, yes. Feel it, feel it, feel it. And now, put your both hands in front of your face and make it closer. Maybe you can close your hand, uh, close your eyes. Just make it closer. Don't touch the hands. But make it closer and closer. And make it further a little and closer, closer, further, further. And at some point, you would feel the sensation inside your hand. It's like a little bit of magnetic sensation. Mm. Sometimes you feel the uh, kind of warmness or even a coldness or like a wind. And now you can use your hands like drawing a circle. and the opposite side. And again, closer and further, push and pull little. So now you feel, you would feel density. You feel more, and it's like if you have some kind of airy bubble inside your hand. As you relax your hands, your arms and shoulders and body, you can feel more. Okay, now make a ball in front of you. Like imagining, use the intention to let the flow of chi forms a ball inside your hand. Just imagine. And it's not like Concentrate too much. It's it's more like relaxing and wait until it happens. It happens when it happens. That kind of spirit. We just hold the ball for a while. Maybe you feel something, maybe not. But when you have intention, it's always happening. Always, 100%. When you have intentions, the flow of energy is always happening as you intend it to. Okay, now divide the ball of chi into two pieces, two balls like you're making a sourdough. And then you put this ball, smaller ball of chi to your eyes. And this time you touch your face, imagining 
the ball of chi get inside your eyes and to the brain and to your body. Like the flow spreads inside your body to the tip of your toe. Breathing three times slowly, starting from exhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, feel the relaxation of your stomach. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And inhale. And hold three seconds. One, two, three, and release. And release your hand. Hmm. It was beautiful. This magnetism to feel the magnetism that's what's going on and to see yes. the ball and wow, mm. beautiful. Mm. And what what does this exercise does to the body to the to the consciousness? Mm. So this this exercise, um, the first we when we tap into the world of chi. It's, it's better we feel it. We can imagine it and it happens, but when you feel it stronger, it's, it's better for the experiment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to, to make our hands more sensitive, I, I use this to like feel the untouching sensation. So actually you feel, you sense something on your face, but mm -hmm. actually it also reflects the sensitivity to your hands, mm -hmm. to your skin. So as our hands are ready, when we do this, then we instantly feel something is happening in between the hands. Mm -hmm. And then, so we are gradually tapping into the world of Qigong. So when you get into that state of mind, then you can imagine it by imagining it, you can form the Qi in any kinds of form you can imagine. You can send it to the other side of the world, Beautiful. if you are in that state. So mm -hmm. the most important thing is about like feeling the energy, not about feeling the energy or make it stronger, but to keep the connection mm -hmm. with your body and the surroundings and the nature and the universe. So mm -hmm. when you are there, when your consciousness expands, you can you can do much more things than you can imagine. It just opens up the possibilities of where you can reach. There are so many things we can do in that state of mind, and uh, it's fun to like explore this new world. It's so beautiful, Nersho. I'm so thankful that you gave us, uh, yeah, an idea of what Qigong is and that you make this amazing exercise with us. And on the 27th of October, from 10 to 11, you will teach an online class with uh, Qigong so that everyone who watch us now can join and can have a much more experience um, what Qigong is. So, and I'm so happy and so thankful for your time today and also for your time uh, when you give 
the lesson. So thank you so much, Neosho. It it was a huge pleasure to deep, much. deep dive deep into Qigong, and uh, yeah, listen to your stories, with, which are always amazing. Mm. Thank you. What you are doing for this world? It, it's beautiful to have you as a friend. I'm really thankful for that, and have an amazing day. And see you soon. Thank you very much. Pleasure is mine, and uh, it was amazing to talk with mm. you. Thank you. And thank you that you watched us. And um, yeah, if you like to share, do it. Just do it. And have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye. Auf der Living Earth teilen wir viele Lösungen wie diese, um gemeinsam eine neue, lebendige Erde zu gestalten. Schaue dir jetzt gleich das Video auf der Startseite an und finde heraus, was für andere wundervolle Dinge die Living Earth noch kann. Jeder Pionier ist wertvoll. Falls du also noch kein Pionier bist, komm, wir freuen uns auf dich.